Reinforcement learning can be used to learn highly capable policies that generalize to a broad range of objects. But these policies can often fail when tested in new settings that lie outside of the distribution of scenes they were trained in, such as these transparent bottles, which were not seen during training. We propose a simple fine tuning method. Our method allows learning robots to continually adapt to novel objects, harsh lighting conditions, challenging backgrounds, different grippers, and even different morphologies. Let's take a look at how it works. Our fine tuning procedure is simple, sample efficient, and requires only a single offline update using a pre collected data set for the target task variation. In our experiments, we first pre train a general grasping policy, as described in previous work. To do this, we use a data set of 580,000 grasp attempts to train a Q function offline with the QT opt algorithm. We then augment this offline training process by training online for 28,000 additional grasp attempts, yielding what we refer to as the base Q function. This achieves an 86% success rate on a challenging subset of test objects, which we use throughout this study. We then use this Q function to explore the new task variation. In this case, we have translated the gripper 10 centimeters to the right of its original position. This exploration yields a target data set of up to 800 grasp attempts, which take about four hours to collect. Here, our base Q function achieves a 43% success rate using the offset gripper. Using these three ingredients, a base data set, a base Q function, and a target data set, we can execute our adaptation procedure. Our goal is to create a high performance Q function for the target task variation. First, we initialize our target Q function using the parameters from the base Q function, which we acquired during pre-training. We then use QTOpt again, this time to fine-tune the pre-initialized target Q function using the new data. We sample data with equal probability from both the base data set, which we used for pre-training, and the target data set, which we collected during exploration. We execute this update process for some number of gradient steps. In this study, we always use 500,000 steps. At the conclusion of this process, we arrive at a Q function adapted to the new task variation we explored earlier. We then evaluate the performance of this adapted Q function on the target task variation, with no further training. Here, our fine-tuning procedure achieves a 98% success rate using the offset gripper, a 55% improvement over the base Q function. Now let's see how it does on several other types of adaptation we study. Our pre-training task is indiscriminate grasping, in which we consider a trial successful if the robot grasps and raises any object. Each target task is a variation on this one, but under some modification to the objects, robot, or environment which the system has never seen before. Here's a variation in which we use a very bright shop light to create harsh lighting conditions in the workspace. The non-fine-tuned policy on the left repeatedly fails by attempting to grasp at its own reflection and not the objects, a behavior which our fine-tuning procedure is able to correct. Next, we adapt to difficult unseen objects, in this case, transparent bottles. Transparent objects are challenging for grasping systems because they are difficult for both visual and depth cameras to see. Though the fine-tuned policy on the right isn't perfect, it suffers from far fewer failures due to jamming or grasping at bottle edges than its untuned counterpart on the left. In this next experiment, we replace the drab gray background of the workspace with an exciting checkerboard pattern. The untuned policy on the left consistently grasps at checkerboard edges rather than objects, a failure mode which our fine-tuning procedure learns to avoid. Next, we modify the robot's gripper. If you look closely, you'll see we've added an extra layer of grip material, making the gripper both narrower and one centimeter longer than the original. This causes the untuned policy on the left to sometimes grasp too high and miss, unlike the fine-tuned policy on the right.
Lastly, we change the robot's morphology by mounting the gripper fingers 10 centimeters to the right of their original positions. Predictably, the untuned policy often grasps to the right of its target object. With a 98% success rate, our fine-tuning method corrects for this problem completely. Here's a quick summary of the fine-tuning results. Our method significantly improves performance on all of the challenge tasks, and even outperforms the base grasping policy on three of the five challenges. These results indicate that our fine-tuning procedure is very effective for adapting to new task variations. But let's be careful to consider how it compares to simpler alternatives. We first compare our method to training a randomly initialized Q function using the same data set of 800 grasps which we used for fine-tuning. As you can see in the extended gripper example here, 800 grasps is just not enough data to train a Q function from scratch. This experiment highlights the advantage of initializing fine-tuning using the Q function parameters from a similar task. Next, we consider a stronger baseline in which we initialize our target Q function using parameters from a classification network trained on the popular ImageNet dataset, instead of those from the base Q function. We leave the rest of the fine-tuning procedure unchanged. You can see in this example from the harsh lighting variation that this method does better than training from scratch by learning visual servoing and to grasp at objects. Unfortunately, it fails to learn depth perception, an important capability for successful grasping. This experiment highlights the advantage of acquiring initialization parameters using reinforcement learning as opposed to less relevant supervised learning datasets. Using these experiments, we've confirmed that our fine-tuning procedure is effective and that its performance compares favorably to simpler alternatives. But recall that our goal is to identify a technique which allows robots to adapt continually, not just once. To assess our method's suitability for continual learning, we devise a simple continual learning experiment, which proceeds as follows. As before, we first pre-train a base Q function using a grasping dataset. And, as before, we use this base Q function to explore a new task variation. We again combine the exploration data with the base data, and initialize the fine-tuning process using the base Q function. But this time, not content to stop there, we repeat the process. We use the Q function from the first iteration of fine-tuning to initialize a new iteration, this time on a different task variation. Then we do it again, and again, and again, until we visited all five variations in the study. Note that we always use the base Q function for exploration. Because our process is entirely offline, we can evaluate all of the adapted Q functions after the fact. As you can see here, the results of this experiment are not significantly different from those of the single-step fine-tuning procedure. This leads us to conclude that continual fine-tuning does not perform any worse than single-step fine-tuning. This is a great property for a continual learner to have, and we hope our method can be used as a building block for a full continual learning method in the future. Let's take a closer look at a couple of the policies from the continual learning experiment. First, we return to the checkerboard challenge, which was the third of five fine-tuning iterations in our experiment. If this comparison looks basically the same to you as the single-step version from earlier, it's because the policy's success rate of 86% is only 4% less than the single-step version. And here's the performance of the fifth and final iteration, the offset gripper challenge. This policy's performance is only 7% lower than its single step counterpart, despite the fact that this network received five times as many gradient updates, and only the last one fifth of those steps contained offset gripper data. Thank you so much for watching our video. For more information and a link to the paper, check out our website at the link below.